Hello, Dr. Lawrence. It's an honor. Thanks for being on the show. Oh, thanks for having me, Nick. Pleasure. Uh, well, you know, I've been very fascinated with the different conversations you've had on different podcasts, to be honest, Ben Greenfield and other people. I came across your information around melatonin and then exploring your products and looking at um, the different means of administration that you're exploring in, in the scope of your company, Mitozen Scientific. I was very surprised because most of what you talk about and even the products that you uh, have developed or unlike anything I've seen before. So I'm very, very excited to uh, be able to pick your brain today about these things. Uh, maybe um, we should start about a fundamental question that I ask a lot of doctors that come on this show. Uh, why is it that you believe that uh, electromagnetic pollution is a stressor to you, the human body when most of your colleagues would argue that it's not? Well, you know, you have to ask like how many, so there's research that is questionable, but some of the research you have to question the funding, right? So like whenever any, and this was a study they actually did with, um, with, with drug development. And they found that when a company funds their own research, 85% of the material is not accurate. And so you have a lot of money backing, you know, cell phone i mean think about it like when you watch tv every other commercial is either at&t or you know mm -hmm. it's somebody peddling um a wireless uh you know switch to our phone it's huge i mean it's probably one of the biggest businesses we have so it's going to be a very difficult task to um really nail down you know these these things without having some conflicting reports come back yeah, I agree 100 percent. And unfortunately, this is a part that's missing from the discussion. Oftentimes when I see intellectuals saying, oh, you know, EMFs, studies are inconclusive, probably no harm. No one talks about regulatory capture or corporate interest when in reality we know that in other topics it's such a big problem. So there's really no, uh, I think it's a little bit naive to think that it doesn't happen with EMFs. And in reality, I've done entire podcast episodes just on the regulatory capture, and it's quite bad. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm glad that you're aware of these dangers. And it, it's one of the reasons that when I listen to podcast uh, discussions with, especially with doctors such as, uh, uh, as yourself, I'm always um, pleasantly surprised when I hear EMFs mentioned. On Ben Greenfield, you said, you, you know, Wi-Fi and uh, Bluetooth, cell phones, it's a problem and it's contributing to the dysfunction we see out there. Something you exchanged with me by email is how um, you said EMFs impact the mitochondria in particular. Uh, mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? What's the main mechanism? Is it that um, we have too much oxidative damage and over time we lose uh, the ability to create mitochondrial energy? Yeah, you know, it's it's not a black or white um answer you know there's there's a few different perspectives that i see with it um one of which is you know kind of dealing with the cell membrane and membrane potentials so the 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 emfs disrupt this um this membrane potential they've done studies on it and shown that in different bacteria there's there's this alteration and so your your mitochondria even have their own cell membrane as well and so life itself is um is hinged upon our ability to keep things separate, right? So you look at like, and you can even take this into kind of a bit of a spiritual, you know, uh, idea of the yin and the yang, right? You have this black and white and the cell has things that are self and non-self. We have things in the cell and things out of the cell. And what happens is as we start to lose the integrity of these compartments <clears throat> is things start to smear, right? And smearing is not a good, uh, healthy position for our our body. You know, it's not a good situation in a lot of in a lot of senses because we want that to be a very clear, you know, black white. You know, we want our cells to have a very clear outside inside, and so the the EMFs actually disrupt this fundamental nature of the the you know us as organisms trying to strive to keep this intact. Um, another consideration is the disruption to the circadian rhythm. Um, and then we kind of rabbit hole a little bit into, um, melatonin, which I think, you know, I just wrote a book called melatonin miracle molecule 
And uh, we have some information, you know, and some referenced information in that book on EMF and how it disrupts. Uh, basically, it tricks your pineal into thinking it's daytime. And so those, um, those waves actually go through the skull and they hit the pineal and the pineal thinks that it's light. And so this alters the, um, the, the pulsing of the uh, melatonin. So <clears throat> you take those two things together, you have a lowering of melatonin. And then when one starts to sit back and really fully appreciate the breadth that melatonin is offering every cell in your body, literally every cell in your body requires melatonin. Otherwise it would be, you know, no more. I mean, it, it's, it's so critical to life because melatonin, well, I should, let me, let me back up. So it's, it's sure. critical to life in a stress environment. And we are in a stress environment and we are even before industrial revolution, we had stresses with just gravity, you know, stresses of trying to survive. And so we have stresses that are within a zone that I call a familiar zone. And then we have stressors that start getting into um, challenging our adaptive ability to uh, survive, um, adaptive survivability, right? So this is hormetic, hormesis. You know, this word is getting thrown out a lot lately. And it's a wonderful word for people to really understand because it's when stress is just a bit of outside of a familiar area or a comfort zone where it actually gets your body to enroll some adaptive responses to be able to buffer that stress whenever it comes back again. And so this makes us stronger. And so then if you get too much of that stress, you know, Nick, you can get damaged, right? So if we have too much, we go to certain planets, you know, that have too much gravity, we would be squished, right? Um, yeah. if, if we don't have enough, then we don't activate our bones, you know, to produce, um, uh, you know, uh, bone and calcium. So it's a fine balance with a lot of these stressors and everybody's going to have an ability to handle a certain amount of each one of the stressors. And this is going to hinge on melatonin. And, and I, it's a, it's a, it's, it's like, it's kind of a wild, you know, uh, a thought to think, but it, it boils down to it, all stresses are going to wind up with inflammation. So EMF is a stressor. I mean, let's not sugarcoat this. EMF is a stressor. Studies have shown it absolutely stresses. Um, it's my opinion that it, it shifts the neurology into a, a stress state, a sympathetic state, um, and that it disrupts the membrane potentials. Um, it disrupts your circadian rhythm. And it's an oxidant, you know, it's, it upregulates oxidation. So all of these things are big headwinds to people that want to be, you know, healthy, but let's, let's look at this and say, okay, so all of these stressors are going to lead to one outcome, which is inflammation and inflammation is going to be cytokines. So cytokines are the, um, are the out, outcome of a stressor, uh, that is, regulating uh, inflammation. So you have these certain set of cytokines that are gonna be typical for each various stressor. Like there's a different set of cytokines for exercise, you know, with the muscle inflammation after exercise versus mm -hmm. the type of cytokine that you might get with a cytokine storm with COVID. And so they all have one similar thing in common is that when those cytokines hit your cell membrane, the cell basically has to look at, it's like tasting that outside environment, you know, and it's just kind of seeing what's going on out there. What do we need to do in here to kind of regulate that? And it starts to sense these cytokines and what it'll do if the cytokine is too high is that it's going to literally shift the way it makes energy in the cell from a way of making energy that it normally likes to do to a way that only makes about 10% of the energy. And this is what happens with cancer cells. This is what happened. This is the reason people uh, die with any type of um, uh, cytokine storm and lots of infections create this. This is how people die generally of even the common flu if they don't have a strong immune system, if they don't strong mitochondria, really. So, so if we wanna break that down, we can say the cytokines 
um, they hit the cell membrane and they shift the energy from aerobic glycolysis where your mitochondria are moving electrons. That's their job. The mitochondria moves electrons and in the process of that, it produces heat, which is exothermic. And you take that, that, that chemical energy and it, it turns it into ATP, which then we drive all of the functions in our body. But when it's stressed, it basically shovels everything outside of the mitochondria and the energy is made outside of the mitochondria in a very primitive form of making energy called aerobic glycolysis. So um, it's not what you want. And um, so this is the shining, amazing thing with melatonin is that melatonin sits in your mitochondria. And as things start to heat up, it's the primary antioxidant that buffers that heat. And oh, um, wow. yeah, and, and, and in fact, with cytokine storms, melatonin could be administered. And there's been studies showing that it puts that it, it, it um, puts the cytokine storm out um, and increase survival rates and with infections. But this is for every type of stress, Nick. I mean, even like a sunburn, right? So you go out into the sun, the sun is hitting your skin. It's a stressor. And we have inflammation and burning that happens at the skin level. You go on, you know, a few days of high dose melatonin. We can talk about why I do higher dose. You won't burn, you will tan. And, uh, and, and this is probably the, one of the most beautiful outward expressions of what I understand from a book standpoint. So I read everything, but then I can really see what the science is telling me in the books. I can see that when I spend the day out in the boat. And I'm in the sun all day without any sunscreen and I just get brown. And my whole life before I did that, I would burn to a crisp. I would, you know, a couple of days later, I would completely lose my tan. But this is totally different now that I've got my melatonin levels up. So we live in a world where, well, I wear these glasses when I'm in front of the computer, and that's a recommendation from uh, Dr. Ben Lynch, told me, Nick, during the day, if you have your blue blockers on, you're going to block certain frequencies. One of the reasons I use those is um, for sure to concentrate on my screen better. I found that I have less eye strain and even uh, professional video gamers use those. So mm -hmm. that's one way to use them. At night, I, I switch to the orange or red uh, kind of U uh, glasses to protect my melatonin. So we live in a world where I stay inside. I should go outside more. I know that because that's where you get the light signals to produce melatonin. But then on top of that, we're exposed to screens and artificial light and also the Wi-Fi router and the electropollution that disrupts our melatonin. So right. I guess the fundamental question is, are most people deficient in melatonin in a major way? I would tend to think yes, considering, I mean, here in this, in this street here, they installed these lights that are incredible floodlights. You wouldn't believe the, the color they chose for those is like, bright white and it's there's no night anymore in montreal since they installed those so mm, that's uh, terrible. what, what yeah. are you seeing clinically as far as melatonin levels go mm -hmm. yeah so naturally uh they if you you can look this up just in in the research um anybody can google melatonin and age graph um, and you'll see that there's a dramatic decline just with the general population to the point where you know once you hit 40 I mean, it's just really diving down. And then certainly by 60, 70, 80, it's almost nothing. So naturally it's low, but then you also have these things that are going to be inhibitory to melatonin release, which, you know, we talked about EMF and also light exposure, light pollution, particularly, you know, after the sun goes down, um, blue and green light um, would not be recommended. And that's why a lot of people may want to wear blue blocking glasses, you know, um, at sun, at, when the sun goes down at night, you know, when they're looking at their computer, um, when they're, um, you know, watching TV, I have a prescription pair like those, but mine are maybe even a little bit more on a blue blocking, um, uh, uh, tint, but, um, but yeah, I, I, I find it shocking at night if I'm watching TV and I just, I look at the TV <laughs> and it's like, Oh my God, yeah. how do people deal with that? You know, but like, that's how we used to roll. Yeah. But I, I promise you anybody listening to this, um, I, these, these would be my bullet points for that, for light pollution is go get one of those. There's these remotes 
and it, it, it controls uh, outlets throughout your house, right? And um, they're very low EMF, but, but you can turn the outlet on and off with this little remote. And then I got these, um, these um, uh, uh, red lamps, those just little lamps, but I bought red bulbs and I set them in, around my house. And I also got some red rope light, but, but for the most part, um, I don't use any of the regular lights because I have can lighting, you know, throughout my house. And so you, you hit that with the, with the switch, the general switch, and it's just too bright for me. So I use this other a remote wireless deal to turn all my lights on and off at night. And that way I can control it and everything's red. So I got my blue blocking glasses so you can go online. Probably you guys have a great um, brand that you like to promote or with the glasses. Um, for the, for the blue, gla blue, blue uh, glasses, these are blue blocks from Australia. And the other one I've been using, these, um, they helped me get these uh, night ones uh, from Raw Optics. I've heard good things about other companies, so I'm not necessarily attached to one or another, but they were mm. great. And they are prescriptions to this one and also my night glasses because I had to put contacts on and they, it was getting very annoying, but now I've got prescriptions on. So yeah, I and same thing for me, uh, if I watch TV without, I, I just feel I just feel bad now. Um, it's oh, only yeah. at the movie theater that maybe I'll go full blast and enjoy the the burn but uh it's just for entertainment purposes maybe once a month maximum but yeah. most most days I, i wear those at night yeah you notice how loud the theaters are these days um i, I can't go loud. to the theater without earplugs i mean it's just a complete you know the decibel level is just crazy so not only you're getting it into the you know your eyes but it yeah but But it's fun, right? We love movies, so we're not going to yeah. give that up. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. I, I know it's this, it's it's a definitely a stressor to my body. I went uh -huh. to watch Dune lately, and I mean, just the sound design was kind of. I mean, I was in shock afterwards, and I'm like, okay, well, that that was enjoyable. I do like I remember that for the rest of my life, I think, but not too not too often. You know, it's no. not it's not something I want to do every day. No. 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 Yeah. So, so um, you you are back to your 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 bullet points about light. So it's it's the right lighting environment and wearing those blue blockers. And and this is not to preserve. If I understand correctly, you you mentioned the release of melatonin. So if you have, from what I I, I could gather in my years of research, if you have more lighting uh, or more natural light exposure during the day then you start producing melatonin or even during the day, I think, or it will increase your production. But it is the release that is hindered by these artificial light frequencies. Is that correct? That, that's exactly it. So we build up melatonin, the pineal does, but there's also melatonin that's secreted from your gut. Um, oh. I don't know if you're aware of it, but there's 400 times more melatonin that's released in your gut. And this actually regulates the microbiome to go through their circadian rhythm because they're on a similar rhythm that we are. And so they like to do something called swarming and microbiome swarming is triggered by uh, melatonin. And they've, they've shown just dramatic uh, studies on a, ver a variety of different gut type of um, diseases with melatonin supplementation, um, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, you know, you name it. They've all they've all improved and they've shown that the melatonin suppresses the bad bacteria and actually promotes the growth of the good ones. So um, so melatonin therapy would be something that would be really interesting for for gut. But, we're, you know, we we could literally, Nick, we could talk for several hours. I know we don't have that type of time. And so I would recommend, you know, anybody that's really kind of getting excited about taking a deeper dive into melatonin, they could go to melatoninbook.com and we'll come up with a coupon code for your listeners where they can download the book for free. It's the PDF version. The hard copy is going to be coming out in a couple of months. And there's about four chapters that will be in that book that aren't in this uh, free download, but um, it, it would be a great way if, you know, for your listeners to, to follow up on this. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, I uh, I haven't uh, dove into it myself, but I have it on my desktop on my to do list to to look at. But I 
I know that listening from your conversations, I gathered a lot about the research and what surprised me the most about everything you said on Ben Greenfield's podcast and whatnot is the sheer amount of melatonin that you include in your products. And I've, I went back and forth on melatonin in the last several years. I heard several things like, well, you take one milligram, two milligrams, maybe five milligrams a few days prior to departure to avoid jet lag when let's go, you go to Europe and you take that melatonin at the time you would go to bed in your, uh, in your destination, basically, uh, mm -hmm. time zone. So I, it made sense to me. I tried it with some success along with blue blockers. But uh, then I, I came across other people, naturopaths and people in the holistic health movement, if you will, that said, oh, melatonin, it's a hormone. So don't play with these things. So I stopped taking it. And now mm, I'm yeah. going back and forth. So what's the science here? Is melatonin taking exogenous uh, melatonin? Can it or can it not interfere with our body's natural production? That's really my main question here. Yeah. Well, you know, I I, I think that this is really a very important um, topic and question. And there's a lot of misinformation out there on melatonin. Um, and I'll give you the biggest, blatant, you know, obvious is is if you if you Google melatonin and side effects and WebMD will come out and they'll give you this list of side effects that melatonin will give you, which depression, headaches, um, dizziness, nausea. I mean, there's, there's a few here. And what they don't tell you is that when they looked at that, the way that they got that, that, that knowledge was the, 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 the placebo arm and the arm taking the melatonin, the side effects were the exact same. So it's, it's a little bit, you know, um, not, not accurate to, to say that melatonin caused those side effects when the, the, all the people that didn't take it had the same exact side effects. So this is the world we live in where a lot of natural uh, strategies are, um, I think, are in, 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 um, intentionally uh, down, downplayed, you know, yeah. and, you know, you have drugs that are phenomenal, like, you know, like methylene blue, you know, and if we have some time to talk about methylene blue, I'd love to, but, you know, you have, you know, the patents have run out. And so um, both doctors and, and, you know, pharmaceutical companies, they're all chasing the latest, greatest, and, you know, they're trying to make money and it's, it's at the, um, at the harm of the, the general uh, public. So um, there are, you know, back to your question, there are ways of taking melatonin in small doses um, and there, there's no problem with that because you can take small doses, you can take very large doses. Your body is still going to produce the exact amount of melatonin once the lights go out. This is when the melatonin is released by the pineal, no matter what. It is not dependent on you taking any melatonin. And then the next day you would produce the same amount as well. So there is no negative feedback loop with this particular hormone, which really makes it quite amazing. And it also might speak to how important this um, hormone is to the body, right? I mean, ultimately we can live without testosterone. It's, you know, for guys, it's not fun. There's a lot of side effects with that, but ultimately, you know, we can survive with very low estrogen and testosterone and things like that. But with melatonin, you know, it's something that's just that important that we don't have a negative feedback loop on it. So it's safe. And also, is it toxic? I mean, Hey, we have products um, that go up towards four, over 400 milligrams, you know, and we, the super Sandman. So we have Sandman products, which is a suppository and we have it in a liposomal and we're dosing people in some really high doses. It's called super physiological dosing. And, um, you know, this might be really good. I know Ben Greenfield calls it the melatonin sledgehammer. <laughs> So he likes to travel and he, he, he swears by it. You know, he will, um, will take it when he lands and he finds it to be much more effective than taking the smaller, lighter doses of, of it. Taken the same way when you get to your destination, you'll take it at, at the bedtime, the normal bedtime. Um, you may not want to do that necessarily leading up to your trip because you can take lighter melatonin. You can yeah. just take a few milligrams, um, 
at the bedtime, which might like, for, for instance, like, let's say I was traveling somewhere that's ahead of me, I could take a bit of melatonin when it would be bedtime there a few days before to kind of get myself primed a little bit. Um, so the higher dose, once you get to that location, to me makes a lot of sense because A, um, you're going to really reset your circadian rhythm. And I've had some experiences because I've traveled back and forth to Hawaii quite a bit. I grew up there and my family's still out there. And it's a really rough trip because it's like five, six hour time difference from Florida. But ever since I've been using this, um, you know, uh, melatonin sledgehammer using the Sandman, I mean, it's, it's just no problem at all. And on top of it, the, that higher dose of melatonin really puts you put you into a very deep, deep restorative sleep as well. Yeah. And I found something I can talk about my experience with the Sandman. And this is before I decided to have you on the podcast. I, I heard, I heard you talk on Ben Greenfield and then I hired, um, I think 30 of your melatonin suppositories and it's been years since, since I had tried suppositories, but I mean, they use them in hospitals all the time for various mm -hmm. conditions, administering drugs. It just works. And I don't have any taboo about, I mean, the, this rectal administration. I did ozone rectally. I, 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 I do coffee enemas and things like that. So, I mean, if people have a problem, they can take other, other routes such as liposomal. But I do believe that it's extremely efficient. Uh, and or at least I believe that. And then an, an anecdote happened. Uh, my son was sick. He's three and a half. He was sick through the night and coughing and then asking daddy, I want a, uh, I want a tissue and I want water. And it was every 30 minutes. So a very, very bad night for daddy trying to get restorative sleep, but kind of getting woken up every 30 minutes. But I was on Sandman. So I had that suppository in uh, at my normal bedtime. And it turns out it was one of my best nights in the last several months. Mm. Even waking up every 30 minutes, and I kid you not, my aura ring showed me scores of HRV balance, like my average HRV was mm -hmm. at record high levels. I've never seen that in the last two years, I kid you not, for three straight days. With my heart rate, my average heart rate, 45 BPM, usually I get 50 48 maybe if I'm uh, if I'm very calm and I don't maybe I have a light day and I don't have a hard workout and now mm -hmm. it was going even lower than usual so clearly my body yeah. in, in between the times where I was attending to my sick kid I was just dying <laughs> and then waking uh, up and then dying and then waking up so it was incredible the kind of awesome. sleep I was having not only that in the middle of the night I felt calmer and mm. I felt totally zen about it. Usually, I mean, sometimes I can get a little bit right up, like, will that kid go to bed? And you feel anger, or you feel fight or flight or anxious about it. And I felt nothing. I felt very calm. And I'm just waking up, attending to the kid, going back to sleep and sleeping well, and then attending to the kid. So it was kind of a, a torture event for my body, a very a stress test, if you will. And yeah. it really passed the sniff test for me at that point, mm -hmm. because the only difference in my routine is those melatonin suppository for a few nights straight. And I saw a tremendous difference in, in how my biology responded to those. Well, Nick, you know, I, you know, I, suppositories can be a, a subject that, um, you know, sometimes people can pull away a little bit from, yeah. um, but let's get to the bottom of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's go. it's, 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 um, it's a, it's a slow release into your bloodstream. And so if we take something orally, it's absorbed, you know, fairly rapidly. I mean, usually within an hour, two hours, um, most of it's in the, in the uh, shorter term. So, you have this spike of these different nutrients that are coming from your food or for different supplements that you might be taking orally. And then there's a little window that your cells have to pull the nutrients in. And what the suppository does is it bypasses the liver, which breaks down a lot of things and also the stomach acids that screw up things as well. So it allows more of these nutrients to get in intact. And also it's slow released over three to five hours. So the cells get to basically bathe in these nutrients for a long period of time and pull them into the cell. And ultimately when you take a supplement, that's really what you're wanting is you're wanting it, it to get into the cell and get yeah. it and make its change. 
and in a sense, it, it does bypass uh, the fact that my digestion isn't where it's supposed to be. I know that from my functional medicine testing, and I'm still working on it. But so it bypasses the gut completely, correct? When correct. it's it, it's rectal. So a lot of people have screwed up absorption, uh, low HCL, low enzymes, pathogens. So it's also a kind of a kind of system that is very aggravated by modernity. So. I find that I mean, why not try it? If 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 you're you um you you're hesitant, well, it's just a little bit of a uh, it takes a little bit of courage to kind of do it once, and after that becomes very very easy. It's like the yeah, first time really, I did a coffee it, enema, you know, it was very scary, but now it's yeah, it's very really, easy. It's for me. really nothing. It takes like two seconds, you know. It, it, exactly. You don't have to put your finger like it far in there. It's like it yeah. kind of goes in itself because of the shape so as soon as you get like the tip of it it just kind of sucks in pretty easily um and you know that it it just depends i think most of the people that gravitate towards our products um and using the suppositories are either people like yourself that are biohackers you know that are like hey i i really want to do whatever i can to improve my health vitality and longevity yeah. And then there's other people that are really suffering, you know, and I'm sure we have a lot of people listening to this right now that are sick, you know, and they're looking for answers. They want to get better. Um, and so these types of strategies might be exactly what you need to really move the needle. Cause oftentimes um, I'll hear people say that they've tried a lot of things and, you know, finally something actually works and it may just be, you know, the formulas are pretty, um, are pretty special, but the, the delivery system is really, I think what really puts it on another level. Yeah. So let, let's dive into two specific things. Um, as we move towards the, 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 the end of this interview, I think, uh, melatonin is specific and then maybe in future, uh, conversations, you might've seen that my teeth are blue and uh -huh, that's yeah. because of metal and blue right there. Blue. So maybe a, another conversation on that would be cool. And this is from transcriptions, uh, Dr. Ted. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I've been, ex Ted. I've been experimenting with, Ted. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and this is why my, my tongue is blue. So people not knowing what we talk about, they'll be like, okay, what the heck is this? Maybe future conversation, but for melatonin, two types of individuals that I, I might think can benefit from that. If you're extremely sick and your gut is literally shattered at the moment, then, well, and, and this administration rectally might be something to consider. And also, if melatonin can help you repair at night or get that deep sleep, it might be interesting, especially mm -hmm. those who suffer from insomnia. So first question, um, have you seen people get out of their 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 rut, their their long term insomnia? People that haven't slept for years. I've I've heard all sorts of things. My dad for years slept maybe two hours per night. And I don't, I don't even know how he was alive, but <laughs> he's a tough guy. But I mean, for people who simply cannot sleep for more than a few hours, have you seen results? And what does the research say around melatonin, uh, maybe in high dose or not, and insomnia in particular? Well, there needs to be more research with the high dose melatonin, particularly for sleep. Um, you know, certainly lower dose melatonin shows that it, it helps with sleep late sleep latency. So it helps you get to sleep, but it doesn't necessarily keep you uh, sleeping. Okay. So, um, you know, it's, it's really, it, it's a big, long conversation. And yes, some people have reported to us with taking higher doses that they feel amazing and they're having some of the best night sleep, like what happened with you. Um, but it's not a hundred percent because there's gotcha. a lot of, you know, variabilities, uh, with people and their, their current situations. Gotcha. So yeah, it's, it's got this kind of N equal one experiment. So I, I guess it's, it's really an option to consider and to try high dose melatonin. If you've been trying everything and nothing works for sleep and, there might be other reasons why you wake up, right? So you also need to fix your light environment and a bunch of other things. But yeah, mm -hmm. something to consider. Uh, and for me, it was really to optimize uh, my health. Uh, it wasn't because I, I didn't sleep properly. But now what I've done is my kid is sick again as we talk. And he, he just a little bit of a, of a runny nose. And I was like, okay, tonight I'm going to take the melatonin because I'm, I woke up maybe three, four times. And this morning I was fresh and, uh -huh. and, you know, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, so I want to keep going. It's just, 
if I have a bad day, I start stressing about it. So for people that are high performance or or just busy people that that say, you know what, I don't, I want to have a good night of sleep, but I know now that tonight I have only six hours. Well, you take one and then you maximize what you have. And for for travel, also, I'll do a lot of travel next year with my wife, Asia, and whatnot, Europe, and we'll go back and forth. And I know it will help me tremendously. So that's oh, that's, sure. that's awesome. Um, yeah. I, I want to dive also in uh, a population that might benefit from those uh, from those m- melatonin products and also other products you have at Mitosan uh, Scientific uh, people with electro hypersensitivity. Um, you mentioned that you have. Uh, something special that you do um, that is outside the supplementation that you can also mention in, in, in the same response. But what have you found in your practice, if anything, that can help with electro hypersensitivity? And is melatonin part of that solution? Yeah, you know, um, we many, many years ago, I had um, someone reach out to me. I, um, you know, I'm a chiropractic neurologist and also a, a naturopath. And um, I, uh, I, I practice cranial adjusting. So there's cranial therapy that we do here. And so the cranium is a bone that has a bunch of different um, uh, places that it connects, connects, right? They're called sutures. And so the plates of the cranium have very specific movement patterns that it follows. And it um, correlates to something called cranial rhythm that helps to move cerebral spinal fluid that bathes the brain and spinal cord and um, cerebral spinal fluid circulates all the way, you know, around your brain and down your spinal cord every 12 hours, you know, that moves a full rotation. And so the cerebral spinal fluid is carrying, you know, oxygen, nutrients, um, neurotransmitters, and a lot of really important things. And, um, and then that gets kind of jammed up. And so um, I had some good experience. Or I, I, I continue to see some good uh, results with doing this form of cranial therapy that I do, which involves using actually small balloons that are placed in through the nose and then they're inflated and it basically releases. So there's this whole idea that the skull um, gets more narrow and um, Weston Price um they, uh, he's considered the father of the raw food movement, right? Yeah. And yeah. he wrote a book called On Physical Degeneration. And in that book, he has pictures of people in Aborigines with wide skulls. And he's pretty much documented how, you know, I mean, 100 years ago, we never had to have our wisdom teeth removed, right? And so yeah. um, our craniums are getting smaller, they're getting wider, it crowds out our sinuses. So, you know, a lot of us have chronic sinus issues. It doesn't drain properly. Um, nasal passages are, are congested. Deviated septum might actually just be the cranium that's kind of buckling in that area with the bone called the vomer. So we do these adjustments on people for everything from TMJ to dizziness to um, double vision, chronic headaches, um, scoliosis. I treat a lot of patients with a lot of degenerative neurologic disorder. And I've seen a good handful of people with um, um, EMF sensitivity, and I've seen some results with that. So, you know, it makes you kind of step back and wonder, like, what, why did it help, right? And so, yeah, I think ultimately we're either a swamp or a river, right? So things are either they've got good circulation, things are moving, nutrients are being delivered, the, we're taking in. Uh, uh, groceries and bringing out the garbage, right? This is the cycle of circulation. And so ultimately doing these cranial uh, releases in, is improving circulation. So I think um, whenever you can increase, improve the, the circulation and the health of the central nervous system, it's going to be able to withstand stressors. And so again, circling back, you know, EMFs are stressors. And so people that have sensitivity have gone to the point where they can't they can't handle that stressor. So what I find really fascinating is that um, so you know melatonin's been shown to buffer the negative effects of EMF. You know there have yeah. been some studies showing that if people take supplemental melatonin, they don't see a lot of the diseases and a lot of the challenges that would be associated with EMF exposure as well. So our older population is really at risk, you know, and especially our older population that aren't supplementing with melatonin. And on top of that, 
you know, they're watching TV, they're on their computer. Exactly. So it's just it's a worst case scenario, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So in, in a sense, I mean, it's melatonin deficiency is, is probably 100% of the population unless you wake up with the sun, you spend your day outside, and then you never look at a screen. So in other words, you're in indigenous tribes and still living with nature. So that's a handful of individuals on this planet right now. For sure. For the rest of us, we're just in this modern lifestyle and trying to to fix the parts that are artificial but yeah we we're just bathing in in something completely artificial and trying to to fix the broken ends um have you seen results with melatonin going back to melatonin for people with electro hypersensitivity oh for sure yeah absolutely they they i i yeah i think it's anybody that's listening to this that's dealing with that i think you should definitely look at melatonin supplementation and you know, you can start with taking lower doses. Um, uh, keep in mind, oral melatonin is only two and a half percent absorbed. And that's according okay. to, the, to the research. And so that's why we look at liposomal and even better, we look at suppositories because you're going to have a much higher. And there's a lot of studies where they actually inject uh, melatonin into a lot of animal models. And so we can't do that. We, we, the melatonin is not available in an injection. So um, it's not really, um, you know, something that would be easy to do anyway for a lot of people, but the suppository is really your next best thing because it's almost like you're get, actually getting like an IV of melatonin yeah. or whatever yeah, you have in the suppository. That's powerful. And my, my opinion about different, you know, different modalities, different supplements is at least try things as your budget allows but if if during a year you 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 purchase 58 different products maybe that's too much but one at a time and then you try them and see if it makes a difference or not 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 trying to introduce 19 different products at once unless that's your doctor telling you that but if you're self experimenting um, for different reasons if it's for your for your health or just to optimize yourself because you're already feeling good then try one product and see can you quantify your sleep even if it's just a journal that says oh my god i'm having like 10 out of 10 feeling rested in the morning five nights in a row when i try these just try to try to do your own self experimentation and if you have electro hypersensitivity that's also something that a lot of people ask me for solutions and obviously i'm not a doctor i send them to uh, ehc dallas and uh, different doctors in environmental medicine, uh, Dr. Stephan uh, Stephanie Carter, and who who know they have specific protocols about for people with electro hypersensitivity. But if you you don't see a doctor right now, or you you have slight sensitivity and you're wondering what to do, well, you you got to look at really what is making or breaking your health. It's difficult to say. Maybe it's nutrient deficiencies, but melatonin, I think it's part of the answer. So that's why I, I always advocate for uh, to to maintain the melatonin you do have with these blue blockers and not staring at screens at night, but also considering supplementation. Now I feel a little bit better uh, telling people that because I was really hesitant for years. But yeah. after my experience and look at the research a little bit, I think it's it's um what what is the upper dose like are, are there any studies on melatonin toxicity in humans and yeah they did it um well they there's an animal model that i i usually reference and it would be equivalent to a um uh 70 kilogram um person taking 150,000 milligrams and they basically wow. just stopped the study but you know if you go and you look up um study after study after study almost um, consistently at the end of the study, the researchers will say that more research should be looked at with this. It's very promising and that there's almost no side effects to it, which further, you know, excites us about this particular direction. So um, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just a very, very safe molecule and very, very necessary and important to protect your mitochondria to protect your energy uh, reserves, you know, and this is at the core, the absolute core, you know, I like to say that we practice metabolic medicine here at advanced rejuvenation, right? And so metabolic medicine is where we're talking about how efficient you are at making energy from glucose and oxygen. 
you know, and we talked a little bit about EMF and how that might interrupt that, um, that situation. And um, so when we start to um, struggle with making energy, then that's when disease starts to show up because the body is a self-healing, self-regulating machine. You know, we're, we're, we have this innate intelligence that flows through our body and we have the ability to heal everything. The, 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 the ability and the knowledge and the wisdom is within all of us. What happens is if we get choked out, we don't have enough energy to express that, that, that wisdom, that inner wisdom. And so that's why when we go to what I consider to be the, the core of the core of the core of disease, and we start treating patients with metabolic uh, medicine, um, you know, we're not chasing these leaves, you know, these, these um, downstream phenomenon. And so that's why I like methylene blue as well, you know, because it's also something that addresses uh, the mitochondria and, um, you know, really I'm just so excited about both methylene blue and, and melatonin together. You know, they're like the super twins. You know? Yeah. Um, well, if you have, um, if you want to head there and talk about five minutes about methylene blue, maybe we can do an intro, uh, to a future conversation about that. I've been trying it for, um, uh, that transcription product. It's, it's paired with other things, caffeine, um, all micro doses really. But yeah. it, it makes my, my, my mouth blue, but that's not why I take it. I take it for the brain and it just helps yeah. me calm down, give me that focus. What is the science behind methylene blue? It's just so fascinating to me. Well, yeah, so we have methylene blue in our um, NAD max. So we have um, a, a, an NAD product and it has the methylene blue in it. And um, there's, um, yeah, so methylene blue is, is a um it's a salt right so it's an it's a salt that was used originally as a coloring agent but then they started staining tissues you know in biology to see them in microscope and they started to notice some really interesting phenomenon going on under the microscope which prompted them to start doing research with with this substance in biology and so they found that it was very effective at killing the parasite that carries malaria and what's interesting is, um, you know, once antibiotics kind of came on the market, um, it, the latest, greatest, we ta already talked about that. Of course, antibiotics, sexy, new, oh man. So it totally, you know, wiped out any interest in methylene blue because you have these new exciting antibiotics that all the doctors were excited about, right? But now you're having antibiotic resistant strains of this parasite. And so there's a renewed interest in people circling back on methylene blue, and they're not seeing that there's any um, resistance that's formed with any microbes. In fact, methylene blue has been shown to be a very powerful agent, antimicrobial agent for viruses, uh, bacteria, um, um, different types of um, uh, molds and, and, and such. So, um, but yet it leaves the body har unharmed. In fact, there was a German doctor back in the um, early, uh, I don't know, 100 years ago or something like that, and he coined the term magic bullet. And he was looking at something that would have all these profound health benefits, but yet leave the body unharmed. And he was talking about methylene blue oh, when he coined really? that term. Wow. So we started using methylene blue here in the clinic as an IV and we all, we have a lot of people that travel to us that are very ill, you know, Lyme disease, mold illness, degenerative neurologic Parkinson's, you know, um, and and so we we're using intravenous laser. So methylene blue is photo um, dynamic, meaning that when you interact light with the methylene blue, it really activates it because it works on something called the cytochrome complex in the mitochondria. So cyto meaning cell and chrome meaning light. This is a complex that upregulates a lot of um, very good function in the mitochondria so that we can make a lot of extra energy. And in fact, once methylene blue gets in the mitochondria, it sits there and it just keeps donating electrons, you know, because the mitochondria wants to move those electrons along to make energy and that gets stuck. But when you get methylene blue in there, it just kind of like keeps churning it. So it almost turns your, your cells into these like crazy Tesla, you know, 
limitless um, energy producing devices in, in a really awesome way. So what we're doing is we're taking and we're doing an infusion of methylene blue IV with intravenous laser. And then we have people go into this closet that has all these red lights. And then we have this oxygen device. Sometimes we use hyperbaric oxygen, but usually we're using this device called a CVAC. So we're pushing more oxygen into the system that then the system can use. And Nick, I, I really haven't seen results this exciting in my you know almost 30 years of practice now. Um, it's just it's just been incredible. Um, so we also do a lot of work with ozone and, and high dose vitamin C and we do infusions with colloidal silver, which sometimes we add into the methylene blue as well because it enhances that photo biomodulation as well. But but this this protocol we call Lumatol, I'm sorry, Luma Blue. Um, and we have a, a suppository called Lumatol Blue, which has um, 360, 300, one's 300 and another one's 60 milligrams of methylene blue. So a couple options. So we're offering people like an option at home to kind of do something with red light panels or even just going out in the sun and getting some similar kind of exciting changes with, um, with using the combination of methylene blue with, with light. And if you're going to use a light and a, like a red light or something like that, you want it to be at 660 nanometers because that's what really works with methylene blue. Gotcha. So it's um, it's a general health supplement um, to boost the mitochondria. So people who would take it for general health reasons or just to get more energy. And of course, if you're sick, well, who doesn't need better mitochondria, especially if you're in chronic disease, right? Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I think I think there's a lot of people that could benefit from it for just a, a big variety. So whether someone's looking to be um, stronger, you know, uh, their brain working better. Um, I mean, there's research on enhanced memory and brain function with methylene blue. There's research on depression. Um, it can be amazing for mood. Oh, that's just across the board. People come in, they're so happy, you know, um, for, for endurance, you know, if you're an endurance athlete, uh, if you're, if you've got chronic inflammation, you got chronic toxicity, you know, these are things that are usually linked to poor metabolism. And so we're at the core of this metabolic issue where we start to work on these with, with high dose melatonin, we start working with NAD replenishing NAD storages, we start going in and dipping into um, supplementing with um, methylene blue. And then on top of that, we do a lot of fasting with our patients where we start to clean up through autophagy. You know, and I'm, I'm sure you guys have talked about it on, on your show before. It's just the, the self-cleaning mechanism that comes with, um, with fasting. And you, all, you put all these things together and it really starts to get exciting. Yeah, this is and and on your website I saw that uh, you have um, different uh, different protocols on there like the Mito Fast protocol that uh, you sent me some products. Thank you so much for that. I will try it and report on that entire protocol, which is several days and uses these principles: uh, metal in blue, uh, the melatonin suppositories at the end, NED, and different products that are really everything I see on 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 Mito's and uh, scientific and that website is is really the cutting edge of supplementation. To be honest, after going through the Upgrade Labs conference, seeing what what is new and exciting and and the most promising compounds now are different than what I I heard about 10 years ago it's mitochondrial medicine and it's also the understanding that uh, light can activate certain compounds I think for me it's it's exciting to see that all these sciences are, are coming together and you're getting these results with people so it's uh, it's very exciting stuff um, uh, do you have anything else that you want to mention I know that well I have to mention Mentioned, there's uh, EMF, uh, uh, no, mitozen.com slash EMF guy. If you go there and use EMF guy as a coupon code, there's 5% on mitozen products. So thank you so much. And there's also that yeah. free ebook uh, download at melatoninbook.com uh, for. Let's, let's your, do that code EMF yeah. guy. Is that okay with you? EMF yeah. guy? Oh, we already you have set it up with your the, team. Yes, already set up. Yes. For the, for the melatonin book, though. 
Oh, okay. I well, I think it, it's applicable for both that they yeah. that it told me. But let's make sure it is. Uh, it will be in the show notes though. So thank you so much for that generous offer of downloading the book. And your book is called I've got it right here, Melatonin: The Miracle Molecule Beyond yes. Sleep Fight Infections. Deg uh, degenerative neurologic disease, depression, autoimmunity, aging, heart disease, and cancer by John Urens and DDC. This is these are bold claims, but I, I know it's heavily referenced, so I cannot wait to dive in there. Uh, anything else you want to mention that maybe we didn't mention the rest the, during this interview um, that is uh, very important? Well, you know, I, I'd like to thank you for the work you're doing. You know, I, I think this is really important that we get the word out on the dangers of EMF. And, you, you know, I, I think that, you know, I, I got the pleasure of hearing you speak up at the, um, at the, uh, at, at the bullet, not the bulletproof, that's the upgrade, yeah. right? <laughs> I get the upgrade computer. labs now. With yeah. Dave, yeah. With Dave <laughs> Asprey and you did such a great job, you know, oh, thank really, you. really excited to see you up there and hear about, you know, all your wisdom from, from, from this field. So thank you. Thank you. Well, the, the, the pleasure is mine. And uh, thank you for being here, sharing your incredible expertise and for uh, developing products that really, I mean, it's just the, the products that blow me away the most in the last 10 years. And I try a lot of things. I've wasted money on a lot of things. I have to confess thousands of dollars. I do try things left and right. And when I see such a difference in my health, I get excited. Uh, of course, it will vary from one person to another, but I can tell you that for me, I'm I'm a subscriber to Mitozen. I will take these, especially in periods of intense stress, uh, jet lag, maybe my kid is sick or I have just a very stressful period, I will be taking Sandman and the other ones that you send me, NED and, and the, the Lumitol Blue, I will also experiment with those and I'm very excited to report back. Excellent. All right. I look forward to hearing that. Thank you Thanks, so much, Mike. Dr. Lurens. Thanks for being here. My pleasure.